this lesson is going to be talking about multiplying and dividing radicals and I feel like I gave so many examples um, so I might have to skip by or else this video is going to be way too long. Okay, so the gist here with multiplying and dividing radicals is we multiply, and I should have put or divide, outside with outside, and the same thing inside with inside. So when we have these two, now similarly to adding and subtracting, we can simplify first and then multiply, or we can multiply and then simplify. Usually I like to simplify first if I notice it, sometimes I don't notice it, and then I multiply first. So if I would say right here, the square root of four, that's a perfect square. So that's a two. The square root of nine, that's a perfect square. I get three. Two times three is six. Now, if I didn't notice that those were perfect squares, I would say four times nine, because they're both under the radical, I can multiply them. You do not have to be like. It's not like adding and subtracting where they had to be like in order to add them. Okay, so then you get 36. And that is now a perfect square, so the square root of 36 is 6. So you get the same answer either way. All right, just whatever you notice. It doesn't really matter. All right, this next problem, once again, another example of perfect squares. So square root of 9, 3. Square root of 16, 4. Answer is 12. All right, sometimes if you notice here, that is not a, there's no perfect square that goes into that. That cannot be simplified. That cannot be simplified. So we have to go straight into multiplying. And you do have to double check this number because sometimes you can, now you'll go, oh my gosh, well now I can simplify it. But we can't. There's no perfect square that goes into 15. All right, same thing here. We can decide that we are going to simplify this first or we can multiply and then simplify. I kind of like to simplify first, so I'm going to keep that radical 7 there because I can't, there's no perfect square that goes into that. 4 goes into 8, so I'm going to say 4 times 2. So I have radical 7 times 2 radical 2. All right, now I multiply outsides by outsides. Well, there's nothing here, so don't think of it like a 0 because then you would get a 0 there. Think of it like a 1, like you have 1 radical 7, okay? So 1 times 2 is 2. 7 times 2 is 14. And now you have to take a look and say, is there a perfect square that goes into 14? 4, no. 9, no. We are good. Now you would have gotten the same answer if you multiplied first and then simplified. Okay? So let's do that this way on this one. If I multiply, this is a 1 right here. If I multiply 2 times 1, I get 2. 4 times 9 is 36. The square, that's a perfect square, so I have 2 times 6, and I get 12. Okay? All right, I wanted to show you something like this. Oh, these are, I keep doing perfect squares. Okay, so let's do this one a little bit differently. On the previous problem, we multiplied first, and on this problem, what we're going to, I mean, sorry, on this, yes, we multiplied first. On this problem, we'll simplify first. So the square root of 4 is 2, so 3 times 2 gets me 6. The square root of 16 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 6 times 20 is 120. Okay? All right, so I wanted to look at this problem up here. If you notice on this one, um, we can't simplify. I can't simplify 10. I can't simplify 6. There's no perfect squares that go into that. Okay, so I'm going to multiply outside with outside. So 2 times 3 is 6. 10 times 6 is 60. And now I have to say to myself, is there a perfect square that goes into 60? Well, I'm thinking off the top of my head, uh, does 4 work? 60 divided by 4 is 15. So yes, 4 works. So I'm going to say that's the same thing as 4 times 15. And what's the square root of 4? It's 2, so the 2 pops out. So I now have 6 times 2, radical 15. Multiply outside with outside. So I have 12 radical 15. So on that example, we couldn't have simplified first because we couldn't simplify. All right, so I want to show you one where we have some letters going on. Once again, we can simplify first or we can simplify at the end. If I notice here, I can't simplify 5a, so there's nothing I can do with that one. I can simplify 15. I can simplify this a squared. So if you're a person that likes to simplify first, you would say to yourself, okay, well, I need two of these A's for, 
and then it pops out and there's just one on the outside, right? The square root of a squared is a. So that means I'm gonna have a, and then I would put another a here or make that a squared, which I'll do in the next step. Okay, so now I have three five, eight, times two a squared radical 15. Okay, so now I can multiply outside with outside, inside with inside because I can't simplify anymore. Two times, uh, sorry, three times two is six and then a squared, and then underneath, I'm gonna have 15 times five is 75. Now I have to say to myself, I can't just stop here. Oh, and I forgot that a. So let's just double check that. Outside with outside, three times two is six. I don't have an a here, a squared, that goes over. Five times 15 is 75, and then the a has to come down and that has to stay under the radical. Okay, I have to say to myself, what perfect square goes into 75? 25 does. So 25 times three is 75. The square root of 25 is five, so that pops out. And then my three, my three A stays in. So my final answer, six times five, 30 A squared radical three A. Okay, I know I should have given myself a little bit more room there. All right, so now what if it's dividing? If it's dividing, it's the same thing. You can simplify stuff that's under the radical and stuff that's not under the radical. So if you look here, both of these are under the radical. Sometimes you'll see it written like this, the one huge radical sign, and that's okay too. So if we were to simplify this, just like act like it's a normal fraction, six divided by two is three. So your answer is just radical three. Now, can we simplify radical three? No, we can't. There's no perfect square that goes into it. So that's our answer. Okay, down here, you have, once again, this is outside the radical, so those two go together. I can't simplify two-thirds. Okay, so I have two-thirds, that stays. Now, 10 divided by two is five, so it's two-thirds radical five. Okay, I wanted to get a few little harder problems in and then talk to you about something else. So let's look at this first problem, right? Because some of the other ones were a little bit on the easy side. So for this, problem here, we can simplify, uh, we can simplify 54. Let's see, is there a perfect square that goes into 54? Four does not, nine. Okay, so I'm gonna say to myself, I'm gonna kind of write over, I'm gonna say 10, and that turns into nine times six, two radical two. So then nine, the square root of nine is three, so that comes out. So I end up with 30 radical six over two radical two. So my outsides go together. 30 divided by two is 15. Six divided by two is three. And I can't simplify that. All right, let's jump to this one. So 12 over three, oh, I can simplify that because they're both on the outside, that turns into four. Um, 75 divided by three, well, that should be two. So, I'm sorry, 75 divided by three should be 25. Okay, so that would be under the radical. And then the square root of 25 is five, so that pops out. And my answer is 20. Okay, let's, let's look at this one over here with some letters. And now this is cube root. Okay, I almost didn't, almost didn't notice that. So let me just remember my perfect cubes. I have two times two times two, which is eight. Three times three times three, which is 27. Okay, these numbers look pretty small. I can probably deal with that. 16 divided by eight, those are on the outside. So that's gonna get me a two, okay? Let's see if we can simplify this cube root. Well, actually, I'm not gonna do that because I noticed that eight is a perfect cube. Eight is on my list. So the cube root of eight is two. So two pops out. Now, what happens here? If I have 11 X's and I need to group them in threes because of the index number tells me I need three of them. Okay, three, six, nine, 10, 11. So I have three groups. So that means X cubed comes on the outside, and I still have x squared on the inside. So if you look here, I had 11 x's. This cube tells, this cube root, sorry, 
tells me you've got to bring them out in groups of three. Okay, so I have one, two, three groups of three. So that's where this x cubed came from. And I still have two left. So those have to stay under the radical. All right, so now let's look at the denominator. Okay, we've already dealt with this eight because 16 divided by eight is two. So that's where that came from. So now I can't really do anything here because, oh, that was a cube root. Uh, I only have two of them and I need three of them in order to get them out. So I have like this. Okay, now if you notice, these are the exact same thing. So these cancel out to be a one, just like if you had three over three or two over two, that cancels out to be a one. So your final answer is two times two is four X cubed. Okay, all right, now this last little bit I wanted to talk to you about is technically in order for numbers to be simplified, you cannot have a radical in the denominator doesn't mean it's wrong it just means it's not simplified so there's this process called rationalization and rationalization oh my gosh I didn't finish um, is when we get rid of the the radical in the denominator rationalize sorry okay is where we get rid of the radical. So if you look here, right, you're gonna say, oh, that's simplified. I can't simplify that anymore, but I can't have a radical in the denominator. So I have to rationalize it. I have to multiply it by, I can always multiply anything by one, right? So that's the premise of this. I can multiply a number by one. So instead of, and a one can be two over two, that's one, three over three. It can also be radical B over radical B. And so what I've done is I've looked at the denominator and I've made that a fraction, okay? So now I'm gonna say, all right, because look here, look what happens. A times B, they're both under the radical, so I can, I can multiply them, gets me radical AB. And look at the denominator. B times B gets me B squared. Well, wait a second here. The square root of b squared. Remember, I need two of them because this index number is a two if you don't see it. I need two of them, so that comes out. So your answer is radical a b over b. Boom, you have simplified it because there is no radical in the denominator. And you can't simplify this right here and this b because that is under the radical and that one is not. Okay, so let's see how it looks like with numbers. You're gonna look here and you're gonna say, okay, I can't simplify five thirds, right? They're both under the radical, but I can't, I can't simplify that. So I'm going to rationalize it. It's almost like, hey, I'm done. Oh wait, I'm not done, I have to rationalize it. So I'm gonna multiply it by one. And the one I'm gonna use is radical three over radical three, okay? So five times three is 15 and they're both under the radical, so that's okay. Three times three is nine. And now if you look, so don't simplify right here because you'll end up right back by where you started. So you have to say to yourself, okay, what is the square root of nine? It's three. And now you're done. That is rationalized. It is in standard form. It is in a simplest form. All right, so let's look at this one. Now, if you notice here, you have, um, you can't simplify that because it's not under the rod, because five, eighth can't be simplified. So I'm gonna rationalize it. I would probably rationalize this first. You could simplify and then rationalize. Um, that wouldn't matter. So, and we can try that. Radical eight over radical eight. Because remember, I'm just trying to get rid of this radical here, okay? So now I have three radical 40. We're gonna have to do something with that. And um, eight squared, the square root of eight squared. Well, let's just do that, 64, sorry. Okay, so now my numerator is going to be, uh, I I'm so hung up on this denominator right now, three radical 40, and the square root of 64 is eight, okay? You notice, gee, I can simplify that, but good thing I checked, but wait a second, this is a radical 40, I can simplify that. So what perfect square goes into 40? Four and 10. Okay, so now I square root four and I get two. So I have three times two, which gets me six over eight radical 10. Now I can simplify this. 
right? That turns into 3 fourths. So my final answer is 3 fourths radical 10. Whew. Now we could have simplified it first and then multiplied, multiplied it. Um, that would have been fine too. Okay. And if we have a sec, I will show you how to do that. So here, once again, we're going to rationalize it, multiply by radical 5 over radical 5. Uh, we're going to end up with, and some of you guys will start saying, oh my gosh, do I really have to write this middle step? Can I just write 5? You can. I and mean, that's going to happen every single time. 2 radical 35 over 5 squared, which gets me right back to 5. Um, now, is there a perfect square that goes into 35? I do not think so. Nope. All right, so that's the basic gist of it. I do kind of want to jump back to this problem just to show you how else you could have done it. And then you're done. I know this is kind of a long video. Okay, so in this problem here, you could have, you might have noticed from the start that this eight is a perfect square. And you might have said, okay, the numerator here is this. And the denominator, well, that's four times two. So this gets me two radical two right? And then you can't simplify, you can't simplify three over two. Oh, so then now we have to do, I'm sorry. Now we have to rationalize it. So you're basically saying, I can't simplify this and I can't simplify this, but I can't have a radical in the denominator. So I have to multiply it by radical two over radical two. Remember, this two is not the problem. This two is fine. It's this two I can't have. All right, so now when I multiply that across, three times one is three, radical five times radical two is radical 10. And I have this two here, and then radical two times radical two would get me four. Now, remember what we know about this, we know that square root of four is two, so you're gonna end up with, the square root of four is two, so two times two is four, which is the same answer as what we got before. So either method is fine. Okay, sorry for the long video. I will see you guys later. Bye.